Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be sewing with you today. I'm going to be showing you how to sew a three-tiered maxi dress with a v-neckline. It's called the Gypsy Moth dress and it's the brand new sewing pattern that I've just put together. And I say that like, oh I just put it together. It probably took me like hundreds of hours of, of just putting it together, but that makes it even more fulfilling to finally have it out in the world for you to try out and make a dress like mine. I've actually had this as this design as a bestseller in my made to measure shop for a couple years now. So it's well due for uh, getting out into the home sewing peeps. So um, I'm just going to go through a quick intro of this pattern. This pattern, I, I had about eight people pattern test it. Photos I'll put up on the screen here. They gave me really great feedback. Thank you so much to those who helped me. Um, those uh, testers have ranked this pattern as a advanced beginner, but more likely an intermediate pattern. And there are all sorts of really cool details that stand out for this pattern. Um, there's the v-neck, of course, but the v-neck comes to this beautiful detailing with top stitching at a sort of triangle point where the bodice meets the skirt. And then another unique feature is a lowered underarm area and it's held together uh, more securely with some underarm ties. They just add really cool texture um, to the to the side and they also make this uh, top very adjustable so that once you've made it you can decide even on any given day how tight or loose you want these um, underarm points to be. And then we've also got the ties on our shoulder points here that connect the bodice front to the bodice back and as this dress goes through the wash and dryer many times these just start to really like crinkle up and get really worn in and lived in and that's one of the things I love about this pattern is it just uh, provides a lot of interesting dimension and texture through the ties and then also the skirt which is um, sort of a boho three-tiered skirt and we're going to be doing some ruffling to get this dramatic effect done at the bottom. I say dramatic, it's not too dramatic, it's just enough to have a really fun time dancing in it and swishing around uh, without adding tons of extra heavy weight or bulk down there. So um, we also have for shaping um, a bust dart and a waist dart and that's going to help everything sort of follow our form a little bit better. So that's it for the uh, general details, but there are some uh, ways that you can change up this pattern to suit your needs. Of course, you're welcome to pattern hack in any way that you can creatively come up with, but uh, for starters, I, I am gonna show in the PDF instructions both how to do the full dress. Uh, that's what I'm gonna show also today in the video, but you could also do just a skirt and then you could also decide if you wanted to do just two tiers on the skirt and have more of like a knee to midi length skirt or do all three that goes down to your ankles and then there's also the option for pockets which I debated back and forth my original design actually doesn't have any pockets in it which feels sacrilegious because I love pockets, I'm, I'm known for putting pockets in all my stuff, but in a tiered skirt like this, I, I don't really want any extra bulk around my hips. And so that's why I didn't originally include pockets. I've put them in the pattern just so that you can choose if you want them there or not. Um, with instructions on how to put them in, they're like inseam pockets. I also had a pattern tester do like patch pockets right on the front of the skirt as well. So play around with pockets, um, definitely an optional uh, design feature that you can add in. When you're checking out the size chart for which size to pick on this pattern, um, do first, there, I have another video on YouTube that's a little bit silly, but it shows you how to do your bust, waist, and hips measurements. And you'll notice that I have a size chart for both your bust and your hips as this is uh, a full dress. 
You are totally welcome to blend between sizes if you're a small up top and a large down below. So let's talk about the materials that you'll need for this project. Of course, the obvious is fabric. Um, I really recommend a mid to lightweight linen or cotton, uh, nothing stretchy. Go with a woven non-stretch fabric. Um, and I like to wear mine without a bra, so you might pay attention to if your fabric is see-through or not. If you were to do pockets on yours, um, like side seam hidden pockets, you might choose like a lighter weight cotton fabric, some kind of lining, pocket lining fabric to do your pockets in. And then the last thing that you don't need but might be very helpful is just a, a thin fusible interfacing. Uh, you're just going to need like a half inch strip of it to help because when you cut out this um, triangle boob <laughs> bodice part, uh, it, this piece right here, it's, it's cut on the diagonal of the fabric and even if you don't have a stretchy fabric, it'll start to stretch out because it's cut on the bias which is stretchy. So um, I just used like a thin, narrow, half inch strip of fusible interfacing right along that edge. But if you don't have fusible interfacing, uh, you can just do like a stay stitching, which is just a, a straight stitch line right after you've cut out your fabric and you should be good to go. And then lastly, I just like to recommend I use when I'm sewing with linen and cotton. I like to use 100% uh, cotton thread. This brand is Gutterman, Guterman, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, I like the way that the cotton thread, first of all, takes to my natural dyes. And then also it sort of shrinks up a little bit in the wash. Which that reminds me, for your main fabric, you want to pre-wash and dry it the way that you're going to wash and dry the final garment. Really don't skip this step, especially when you're working with natural fibers because they'll shrink a lot over time. Something really important to note about the fabric yardage when you're going to shop for your fabric is I highly recommend that you get fabric that has a width greater than the tier three measurement for your skirt. So. This is something you're going to really want to consult the sewing pattern instructions on for the full table here of measurements. But here's the quick rundown of it. Basically, tier 2 and tier 3 of the skirt are just big rectangles and so I did not include them in the PDF sewing pattern because it's pretty easy to just pattern out on your own and I didn't want you to have to waste paper. But um, Tier three is pretty wide, um, especially as you get up into the larger sizes. So I have a chart here in the instructions and you can see when you look at it that tier three actually has, um, that rectangle is 57.5 inches that you're going to need across. Uh, and if you need to fudge it a little bit, there's room because we're gonna be gathering. You just might not have as much of a poofy skirt if you fudge that number a bit, but all I'm saying here is that, let's say your 5XL, your tier three uh, rectangle width is 57.5. I really recommend that you use a fabric that's at least, let's say, you know, you could fudge it with 54 inches, but try and get one that's 58 inches. And you can see as it goes down, like an extra small tier three is only 44.25 inches. So you could probably get away with a fabric that has a 44 inch width. I hope that makes sense. Um, if your fabric isn't as wide as your tier three, you can always cut these into panels um, and piece them together to make one larger tier. Uh, I just, you know, to make it nice and simple, I recommend getting the fabric in the right size. A quick note about when you go to print out this pattern, uh, you are welcome to print out just your selected size by choosing the layers icon if you're using a PDF reader like Adobe. Um, you can turn off and on different sizes and I recommend that you print the pattern at 100% custom scale. I have another video about how to assemble your pattern pages once you've printed them out and I'll link to that here as well. There are two different places that you can sort of double check that your printing and your pattern paper assembly is accurate and these are uh, on the very first page, there's a scale right at the top. So you can see um, in centimeters and in inches if that scale is accurate. 
And then a second place is to double check that your pages are overlapping correctly. Um, it's between a couple of the pages I have a line like from point A to point B where you can, it's supposed to be something like four inches and you can measure to make sure that when your pages are overlapped, uh, it's exactly four inches in between. One last thing you wanna do before we get started is think about if you're going to adjust your sewing pattern by your body height. Uh, all of my sewing patterns are optimized for someone who is 64 inches tall, which is five foot four inches or about 163 centimeters. So if you're not that height, then you wanna head over to the Charlie Darwin height adjustment calculator. It's a really cool tool I've put together that helps you see how much uh, you need to add to the bodice, to the skirt. And I also have another video on YouTube that shows you exactly how to use the calculator and make height adjustments. So I'm not gonna go over it here, but I highly recommend you try it out because it'll really improve the fit of your garment. All right, once you've found your size, you've gotten your pattern printed, you've assembled your pattern pages, you've cut them out and done any height adjustments that you need to, and you've calculated your tier two and tier three for your skirt, then <laughs> we're ready to get started. If you have seriously any questions at all as you're going through sewing this pattern, please, 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 don't hesitate to email me. I'll put my email address below. I try and respond as soon as possible. You can send me pictures, videos, whatever it is that helps you get your point across um, so that I can help you better. Also, please, huge please, send me pictures of your final creations. I have been making this dress uh, over and over again for the last couple years for other people, but I wanna see how you make it. I wanna see uh, what fabrics you chose and maybe what edits you made to it. It truly makes my day. So please send any feedback um, on the pattern and any photos as well of, of what you've made. All right, now let's actually get into the sewing. Once you have all of your pieces cut out of your fabric, there's something we wanna do right away before we start stitching. We wanna make sure that we sort of stabilize the V neckline on our bodice front. We can either use fusible interfacing to do this or some stay stitching to prevent any stretching from happening. I just recommend that immediately after you cut your bodice front pieces without pulling or stretching the fabric, you either stay stitch this diagonal line or use a half inch strip of fusible interfacing along that edge to keep it from stretching out. I actually didn't have this step in here at first and when I got to a later part of the tutorial, I realized, oh crap, it's really stretched out and so I went ahead and added the fusible interfacing to mine. You can see in this example, just from handling my bodice piece in these first few steps, how much that center front line has stretched out past what the original pattern looked like. Let's go ahead and prepare the ties. These are the shoulder ties and the underarm ties. These ties are gonna be made similar to double fold bias, if that's familiar to you. We're going to lay the fabric strip wrong side up on your ironing board, fold the strip in half lengthwise, bringing the raw edges together, and then Press with your iron to create a center crease. Then we're going to open that strip back up. Now for the second fold. We're going to fold one long edge towards the center crease and press it with our iron. Then repeat for the other long edge. So you now should have two long folds that are meeting at the center crease. All right, now we're up for our third fold. We're gonna fold that strip in half again along that original center crease and closing the raw edges inside. Press this thoroughly with your iron and you should now have a strip that is one half inch wide with all the raw edges folded inside. You can also use a 25 millimeter bias tape maker if you have one. And we're gonna be sewing this with a 1 8 inch seam allowance, so really close to the edge.
And here's how that looks when it's finished. Go ahead and repeat this for all eight ties. Now after trimming my threads, what I like to do at the end of each strip is to tie just a simple knot about an inch to half an inch away from the end. Now let's sew the darts on the bodice front. We've got our bodice front and our dart legs are drawn on the wrong side of the fabric. We wanna fold the fabric so that the dart legs are perfectly aligned. The center fold should run directly through the dart point. Now we're gonna place one pin at the start of the visible dart leg and another pin at the dart point. This just helps you see where your line starts and stops when you're sewing. Repeat these steps on the other front bodice piece. Now over to the sewing machine. We're gonna begin sewing at the widest part of the dart towards the dart point. Backstitch at the beginning to secure the thread, but you do not wanna backstitch at the dart point. When you reach that dart point, just sew right off the edge of the fabric and you're gonna leave like six inches of thread tails. This is gonna help your dart look a lot cleaner in the end. So what we're gonna do next is to secure that dart point and not let the threads unravel, uh, we're gonna by hand tie the thread tails into a knot, pull, it, pull the knot close to the fabric. And I like to do a double knot, sometimes a triple. And then I trim the excess thread, leaving just a real short tail. Now over to our ironing board with the fabric right side up. I use my fingers to tuck that dart seam allowance downwards towards the waistline and then iron it to press it really flat. Repeat these sewing, knotting, and pressing steps on your other bodice piece. All right, now a couple more darts. We're going to sew the skirt front waist darts. Huge reminder here, the waist darts are sewn on the skirt front only. They're not sewn on the skirt back. We're gonna do gathering on the skirt back. We're gonna make these darts just like how we made them on our bodice front pieces. Fold the fabric so that those dart legs are perfectly aligned with each other. Now at your sewing machine, begin sewing at the widest part of the dart, backstitch at the beginning to secure the thread, and then sew along your marked dart line toward the dart point. Do not backstitch at the dart point. When you do reach the dart point, sew right off the edge of the fabric and then leave a like six inch long thread tail. And just as before, we're going to hand knot our threads together here um, and then trim any excess thread. Now with our fabric right side up, we're going to press the seam allowance of the dart outward toward the hips. Next, we're going to attach the shoulder straps to our bodice. So with the right side of the bodice front facing up, we're gonna place the flat, unknotted end of a shoulder strap at the upper shoulder point on the bodice, getting those raw edges aligned. Go ahead and pin this in place. Now you're gonna repeat on the other three shoulders. So you have your two bodice front pieces and your one bodice back piece with two shoulder ties. And then we'll take it over to our sewing machine and stitch across with a half inch seam allowance right across that strap. I know this seems like a really small spot, but we're actually going to then serge or zigzag stitch along that raw edge to protect it. Now with the right side facing up, go ahead and tuck the seam allowance that we just made behind the bodice front piece and press the string upwards. Now we're ready to attach our 
bodice binding. So it's gonna give us a really clean finish around the neckline and the underarms. We're going to be using the two one inch strips that were cut out on the straight grain. These are called the bodice center front binding pieces. We're gonna use those on the V neckline. And then we have five shorter strips that are cut out on the bias or the diagonal. Uh, these are probably feel a little bit stretchier. They're called the bodice bias pieces. We're gonna use those on the armholes and the back neckline because that stretchiness helps us work around those curves a little bit better. So let's start with the bodice front center. With the right side of the bodice front facing up and the right side of the binding strip facing down, pin the bodice center front binding on top of the bodice front neckline. We're gonna align those raw edges and sort of place it so that there's at least one to two inches of overhang up at the shoulder point. Now we'll take this over to the sewing machine and stitch at a quarter inch from the raw edges. Go ahead and repeat this for the other bodice front piece. Now we're going to do generally the same thing with the rest of our bodice bias strips. Um, we're gonna be attaching them at the bodice front armholes, the bodice back neckline, and the bodice back armholes. But this time what we're gonna do as we're putting our strips around those curves is we're going to sandwich the underarm ties that we made between the bias strip and the bodice piece. You're gonna to want to angle your underarm tie downward at a 45 degree angle. Put the raw edges of the bodice armhole at that circle notch that was on our sewing pattern. Go ahead and pin that underarm tie in place. Then you want to layer the bodice bias strip on top of this, wrong side facing up. Repeat the steps that we took for the V neckline. You're gonna be leaving at least a one to two inch overhang at the shoulder point. And once you've pinned it in place, we're going to stitch a quarter inch from the raw edges. Now we're gonna repeat these steps to attach the underarm ties and the bodice bias binding on our bodice back piece. So I'm just pinning those straps into place and then I'm going to layer on top my bodice bias pieces at all three curves. Once you're ready, you can sew each bias strip onto the bodice with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now these next steps apply to all of the binding on both the bodice front and back, including the V neckline, underarms, and back neckline. With the right side of the bodice facing up, we're gonna press the binding up and away from its seam with the bodice. Then flip that bodice piece over so that the wrong side is facing up. And trim the tail end of the bias strip at the shoulder to be about one inch long. We're gonna fold that tail end down onto itself so that it's folding down at the tip of the shoulder. Press this fold with your iron. Now we're gonna fold the long edge of the binding over the raw edge of our bodice piece toward the inside of the bodice, aligning that binding's raw edge with the seam line that we just made in the previous step. We're gonna press that binding really flat with our iron so that it wraps around the seam allowance, completely enclosing it.
Then we'll fold the bias binding in toward the bodice one more time so that our original seam line is just inside the outer edge of the bodice. The bias tape on either side of the shoulder strap should be overlapping about half of the shoulder strap, and together they should be almost completely covering it. Press it really flat and then pin. Quick reminder, this is a great spot to add a garment label if you have one. Now we're going to stitch as close to the inner bias fold as you can reliably get. Once I get up to my shoulder point, I just make a right turn and continue that stitch down the armhole or neckline, whichever direction you're going. Repeat these folding and stitching steps for your front bodice pieces. Now we're ready to overlap our bodice front pieces. So with the wrong sides facing up, overlap the two bodice front pieces, aligning those notches at the bottom and especially the center front. Now go ahead and Add some pins here to hold this triangular overlap in place. Now with the wrong side still facing up, we're going to top stitch 1 8 inch from the visible diagonal seam line. Now we're going to add a second parallel line 1 8 inch again from the edge of the bodice piece. Make sure to back stitch at the end of each line. Now let's flip our bodice with the right side now facing up. We're going to finish our triangle top stitching here by top stitching a line 1 8 inch from the edge of the top bodice piece. Running up from the bottom at the waistline to meet up in the center with the stitching lines that we just made on the back. All right, now for the fun ruffles, here we go. So for creating our skirt ruffles, you're gonna grab your tier two and your tier three pieces. Over at your sewing machine, you want to change your machine settings to be your longest possible stitch length. Then you're going to straight stitch down the very long edge of your tier two and your tier three pieces. You're going to stitch about a quarter inch from the edge, back stitching only at the beginning. And then instead of back stitching at the end, you want to leave a tail of thread about six inches long or longer. This is called a basting stitch and it's what we're going to use to gather the fabric. Once you've added your basting stitch to all four rectangles, we're going to go over to our ironing table and with right sides facing, align the stitched raw edge of tier two with the raw bottom edge of tier one. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite way to make ruffles. If you have an ironing board that is sort of a soft padded fabric, you might try pinning both layers of fabric down to the ironing board at each edge of the skirt. Then I stick an extra pin a few inches away from the sort of loose tail of thread that I have on one side. Then I grab one of those loose threads and pull it gently until tier number two's raw edge is the same length as tier one. 
And then once I have that thread pulled to the right amount, I go ahead and I wind it around that extra pin I had on the side to hold everything in place. Now with both hands free and the length is fixed because I've secured my thread around that side pin, I can evenly space my ruffles throughout the length here and get them at the exact spacing I want them to be. Then I come in with my iron and I press everything really well. Then I add a pin every few inches to keep everything in place. Now if you use this ironing board pinning method, just remove your anchor pin and then remove and replace the pins that are tacking that fabric to the ironing board on both sides. Over at your sewing machine, be sure to return your stitch length to its normal setting. With your ruffles facing upward, we're going to stitch along the long ruffled edge with one half inch seam allowance. Then we're going to zigzag stitch or serge along this edge to protect it. Go ahead and repeat these steps to attach tier three to tier two. Now with the right side facing up, we're going to press the seam allowance away from the ruffles up toward tier one. Now we're going to top stitch right here, 1 8 inch from the original seam line. Repeat this pressing and top stitching process for all of the seams between your tiers of your skirt. Now we have all three of our tiers combined here. We are going to just get our hemline started. We're gonna fold that bottom hem of tier three toward the wrong side by a quarter inch. Press it really well with your iron, and then we're just gonna return to finish this hem at a later step. Now I'm gonna show you how to attach the side seam pockets, but these are totally optional and you're welcome to skip ahead in the tutorial if you're not going to add them. So to add our pockets with right sides together, you're going to pin each pocket bag to each side of the two skirt tier one panels. You wanna make sure that you're matching the top of the pocket to that notch on your skirt pattern that had the letter P on it. You wanna keep the raw straight edges of the pocket even with the side of the skirt. You might need to kind of work it around the curve line of the hips on the skirt. Now pin it in place and stitch at one half inch seam allowance. Now to prevent fraying, it's important that we come in and serge or zigzag stitch along the edge of the seam line we just made, starting at the top of your skirt waistline down to about one inch below the pocket bag. Really make sure here if you are using a serger that you do not trim any fabric in the process of doing this. Now with right sides facing up, I'm gonna press my pocket and my seam allowance out and away from the skirt. I'm gonna understitch here, which just means that I'm stitching through just the pocket and the seam allowances, staying really close to my original seam line. Repeat these steps for your other three pocket pieces on the skirt front and back. Now we can attach our bodice back to our skirt back. So we're gonna do a little bit more gathering here. So change your machine settings to be the longest possible stitch length. And so a straight stitch along the top edge of your skirt back tier one piece, a quarter inch from the edge. Remember to back stitch at the beginning, but instead of back stitching at the end, leave a tail of thread about six inches long. Now with the right sides facing, align the bottom raw edge of the bodice back with the top raw edge of the skirt back. Now I'm gonna do these ruffles with my ironing board trick again. 
So I'm pinning down both layers onto the ironing board at each far edge just to hold it in place. And I'm going to gather that skirt fabric by grabbing one of those loose threads and pulling it gently until I can get uh, tier one's raw edge to be the same length as the bodice edge. And then I'm going to take that thread, wrap it around my anchor pin, perfect the spacing of my ruffles. Then I'm going to press with my iron and then I'll add pins every few inches. Over at our sewing machine, we will stitch these ruffles at one half inch seam allowance. Then go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch to protect the seam. Next, with the right side facing up, you want to press the seam allowance upward towards the bodice. Top stitch over the seam allowance at 1 8 inch from our original seam line. We're getting there. Our next step is to attach the bodice front to the skirt front. So with right sides facing, we're going to align that bottom raw edge of the bodice front with the top raw edge of the skirt front. They should match up perfectly and you can go ahead and pin these in place. Over at your sewing machine, stitch a straight line with one half inch seam allowance. Go ahead and then serge or zigzag stitch to protect the seam. Now with the right sides facing up, we're going to press that seam allowance downward toward the skirt. Go ahead and top stitch over the seam allowance at 1 8 inch from the original seam line. Finally, we can attach our dress front to our dress back. So we're going to place the front of the dress on top of the back of the dress with the right sides facing each other. And make sure that you will really align all of those raw side edges, including the pockets if you made them. If you didn't do pockets, go ahead and just stitch that straight line down with a half inch seam allowance. If you did add pockets, you're going to stitch the side seams with a half inch seam allowance, stopping a half inch below the pocket top, make a 90 degree turn with the needle and stitch all the way around your pocket bags, making then again another 90 degree turn to return to your skirt pieces. I'll, I'll get close up and draw it in so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. After you've stitched around your pockets, go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch to protect the seam. And just a note that if you're going around the pockets, go really slow and be super patient with the curves around the pockets. Just be cautious not to cut into your skirt with the knife of your serger at those really sharp right turns. If you used your serger, just a reminder to tuck any serger threads that are hanging off at the underarm back into the serge seam or however you like to finish your serged edges.
All right, we're back to our final hemline here. So this is a great time to try on your dress just to make sure that you like the length. If you feel like you need to make it any shorter, you can always just cut the fabric shorter on that bottom tier of your skirt, or just do a little bit larger fold on the bottom hem, whichever you prefer. Um, but we are going to turn that bottom hem of the dress up another one quarter inch. If you remember, we did a quarter inch in a previous step. So this is our second turn, a quarter inch. Um, and you can pin if needed. Otherwise, you can just press really well with your iron to hold it in place. And then you're going to stitch as close to the inner fold as you can reliably get. You did it. You sewed it. It's freaking beautiful. I'm so proud of you. And you should treat yourself to a snack and a big hug and stretch and make sure you're drinking water. And yeah, I don't know, parade it out on the town. Freaking fly around in this bad boy. Go brawl us, get in the breeze, have a fun time. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please, please reach out. I'm happy to help. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.